So this is a 1996 Volvo 850R. And uh, the difference between this and the standard T5 was this has a little bit more horsepower. It does 240 horsepower. I believe this, the stock T5 Turbo 850 had 222 or thereabouts. They've done that through a little bit of ECU tuning, uh, raised the boost pressure. And uh, it's got slightly lower ride height and then some nice interior features where it's got Alcantara seats and just maybe you know a slightly different steering wheel bottom. Of course it's got a front spoiler and a rear spoiler that are unique to the R. And uh, this is the first year it was called the 850R. In 1995 it was called the T5R and they made very few of those and if you see a yellow T5R it's just one of like I think they made a, a thousand or two thousand of those worldwide. And there's only a couple hundred of them in the United States. Um, not 100% sure about those numbers, but it's, it's somewhere in that range. So they're pretty rare cars. I think they made probably a few thousand of these per year uh, after 1995, so 96, 97. Uh, they had a pretty good run. My first car was a 95 Volvo 850. It was a manual, but I mean, it was naturally aspirated. Um, and I put 100,000 miles in that car in high school and college and absolutely loved it. It was a blast. Um, so this was kind of my ultimate version of my first car, and I bought it, and it's, it's, it was a very sentimental purchase for me because uh, it, it takes me back, man. It really does. Like, driving this car is a very familiar thing, and it's a lot of fun to drive. I enjoy it. I know you can do a few little tweaks here and there. You can make it handle. It already has a lot of power. So I kind of bought it as something just to drive around and enjoy and take care of and tinker with. My other car is a Subaru BRZ, and yeah. uh, that's a lot of fun to drive too. So between these two, like, I'm a happy camper. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah. So how often do you drive it then? Probably about every day so far since I've owned it. I think it's I think it's important to drive old cars on a regular basis. You got to keep the fluids running through them, keep things lubricated, clean out the pipes a bit, do that old Italian tune-up. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't plan on driving this in the winter, and I try okay. to keep it out of the rain because it is so clean. It's only seen one winner in 19 years. Oh. Um, I kind of gotta gotta take care of it. Is there anything that bothers you about it so far? It's automatic. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, it's automatic. Okay. The dash, it, you know, it rattles a little bit. These these old Volvos weren't bolted together. The interiors weren't bolted together as well as they really should be. If you take like a Saab from the same era, like they they'll feel a lot tighter, a lot more better put together. These Volvos tend to rattle around a little bit, and that's okay. I mean, you know, it's just, you just got to deal with it. And uh, I like to do a little bit of chassis bracing underneath. You can get some, some upper front and rear and lower front and rear chassis braces, just bases, basically pieces of bolt-on steel that you just bolt onto the chassis, and they stiffen it up quite a bit. So I've, I've never experienced that. I hear that helps quite a bit with just the overall MVH on the car and, of course, the handling. So what would you tell somebody who's looking to buy an 850R or something similar? You don't want to have to rely on someone else to do the work for you because it's really expensive. Um, I bought this car knowing that I would be wanting to do all the work myself. And I did a lot of research on what to look for. There's a few things that can just kill these cars, and, but you can, you can pretty much figure out if they have issues at the test drive and at the first, you know, when you first see the car, uh, if you're looking to purchase it. There's a lot of information online, so there are YouTube videos, there are articles, there are extensive write-ups with pictures telling you everything, like, everything you need to know to fix on this car is, up, is already on the internet, so that's one big advantage. They're kind of hard to find clean these days, but they're really good cars. If you take good care of them, these engines will go for three, four hundred. 400, 500,000 miles. They are, they're pretty, they're pretty bulletproof if you, if you take good care of them and you address just a few of the, the issues, the sticking points. And what was the engine again? So this is a 2.3 liter uh, high pressure turbo uh, straight, or inline five. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to plug your YouTube? Yeah, so I'm, I'm Chris from Windy Road Magazine. We've got a uh, big YouTube channel on uh, we do a lot of POV test drives and just beautiful car videos with nice sounding exhausts and uh, yeah, check it out. Thanks Chris. Yeah, man.